Hello and welcome to Small Business 21st Century and today's segment of Build Your Difference. I'm your host, Pierre Walters, and we have a wonderful show for you today. Our guest is a native of Cascade, Virginia. She's a graduate of Virginia Tech with degrees in biology, human nutrition, food, and exercise science. She has excelled in the fitness industry for over 20 years in the Washington, D.C. and metro areas. And now has she authored a book uh, based on her many experiences. This is a real page turner and I'm so excited to be sharing with you today. 101 Ways to Successfully Age Gracefully. Please welcome the new author, Tanya Walton. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. It is a real pleasure to have you here, and I am so excited about your book, 101 Ways to Successfully <laughs> Age Gracefully. Where, where did this idea come from? Where was the inspiration for this book? Well, the inspiration came from my grandmother, um, but most of it came from like seniors that I taught over time. Um, my grandmother passed when I was 21 years old, and so when you're young, you don't think to ask them questions, how they live their life, how to age gracefully, because she lived to be 94. And so as I grew older and through teaching, I had some really good, interesting seniors in my class, and they aged gracefully, and so I wanted to know more about them, so I would just ask them questions, and I documented it over time. How'd you age gracefully? What were you doing to live a full life? Wow, and and how how many how much how much time did did it take for you to document all of this? Like, is this just uh, mm, how, how many years of wisdom did you accumulate? This has been like it's over eight years yeah. of documenting, wow. of consciously documenting. And when you were documenting, did you know that you were going to be putting it into a book? Um, I didn't know, mm -hmm. but I've been journaling since I was like sixth grade, okay. so. I think that it would have been, I think, yes, eventually I wanted to make, write a book about it. I see. Okay. Yeah. So you knew, you knew a book was on the horizon. Yes, I okay. did. Okay. Why is American society in search of the fountain of youth? That's a great question. Um, I think people, as you grow older, you want to feel young. And so you always want to have that mindset. When you're young, you can, you're vibrant, you can travel, you can go places, you can do things for your, with your family. And so I think always want to have that mindset of that fountain of youth. What can keep me younger? Our society is. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty much. And, and what, are the, what are some of the ways that uh, people can achieve this f fountain of youth? One of the well, one of the ways definitely is exercise. Exercise, exercising, okay. eating properly, nutrition, mm -hmm. um, and having a positive mindset. Now you've worked as a fitness trainer for years, and you've met a lot of a lot of people. I'm yes. sure you've, yes. you've probably had so many clients, and I'm curious. What have you found are the major areas of aging gracefully based off what you've observed? And what, what have you found are the, the major areas that you've actually highlighted in your book? Um, some of the major areas is physical and mobility. Um, the thing of having a positive mental attitude, having mental clarity, and being around, having a good relationships and social relationships with people. That really contribute to having a graceful, successful life. Mm -hmm. And, I, and what I like about about how you've how you've kind of branded this is is by using the word graceful, yeah. having a graceful life, aging gracefully. And sometimes, you know, my my experience is that a lot of people are afraid to age, or or simply are trying to do whatever they can to reverse it altogether but but it seems like what you're saying is well we're we're going to age That's, exactly that is a matter of physics right <laughs> a matter of life yes yeah. so so really it's not about reversing it but but rather moving forward gracefully right and and with pride and confidence and uh, what are what are the the top maybe three or four tenets that you bring with you to every client or, or even through this book mm -hmm. uh, for aging gracefully? 
one of the main things is being consistent. Mm -hmm. Being consistent in creating a habit, habit of physical mobility, working on eating fruits and vegetables, and having a positive mindset. Think nice thoughts. Mm -hmm. Thinking nice thoughts. So, so why do you suppose that is? Uh, the, is there a correlation between what you're thinking and and the quality of your life, or or what's happening in your head, and and whether or not you're aging gracefully? Is there a correlation there? I think so. If you feel good, you do better. Oh. You, you if you exercise, mm -hmm. it makes you feel good. It increases your energy, your mood, and so you tend to um, relate better. It's a, a it's a stress reliever. You know, something, something that I, I really liked about the book, when I was looking through it, I, I thought it was so interesting how every page had a, a nugget, a, a really powerful piece of wisdom that you could sort of take and, as a reader, reflect on. And, and then the other page had a journal <laughs> where you could write out your thoughts. What was your inspiration for sort of presenting it in that way? Um, I want to present it like if you want to interview like your grandmother or the or, or your child, it was a way for them to give their thoughts for them so they can figure out how did they feel. Mm. And then it's like a legacy or something that they can go back and look on down the road and say, ooh, this is what my grandmother thought. This is how she aged gracefully or this is what she thought about, you know, how to think nice thoughts, mm -hmm. or what makes you smile. I, I really appreciate the way that you structured it because I'm someone, I'm someone who I, I don't journal. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it is because sometimes it's, it can be challenging for me to, to sort of uh, be aware of the thoughts as they're happening and, mm -hmm. then, and then have the presence of mind to then document those thoughts. Right. But what I liked about the way that you structured your book was the, the, the nuggets that you provided were so, are so insightful. They're so uh, powerful that it really inspires me to immediately start reflecting on that. And, that, and, and when I'm in that, in that space, I've already got the journal pages ready for me, mm -hmm. so I, I'm not needing to remember what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. I can just reflect and immediately just start jotting down, you know, you know, if, if I'm just doing this as sort of a solo exercise. Or, like you said, if, if I were um, with someone else and, and maybe asking them these questions and wanting to hear their feedback, I would have something immediately to write down. Um, and so that I could reflect on later. I really appreciate the way that you structured it. Mm -hmm. I thought that it was just, um, I, I think I was telling you before <laughs> before we actually started the show that um, the, the title of the book is 101 Ways to Successfully Age Gracefully. Yes. But let me tell you, that book is way more than 101 pages. It's That book was easily more than double. And, and I think that that was very uh, generous of you to ensure that each nugget, hundred, each of the 101 ways to successfully age gracefully was accompanied by a journal page where you can, where you can reflect and, and document that. I just really thought that was just such a nice touch. Um, does physical fitness work with or overlap mental fitness? It's a combination of both. It definitely does. Physical activity, based on research, actually improves your mental alertness. It helps with depression, anxiety. So it's definitely related, physical activity and mental fitness. Mm -hmm. And have you, uh, have you experienced any of this sort of directly in your own life? Or is this, is, this how, is this what you are sort of documenting based off your observations of others? Documentation of others, but definitely for myself. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we go through stressful events and things happen. But when you exercise, those endorphins or whatever, it helps relieve that yeah. anxiety and that extra stress. That explains why I love riding my bike. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I love riding my bike. My bike is my, uh, my weekly just, I'm done thinking about all the things. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just go ride my bike. 
<laughs> so I absolutely, I absolutely love that. And so it, it's like you said, it's developing habits. For me, that would be a routine. That would be a habit that I try to stick to. I'm not always the best at it. Sometimes mm-hmm. I, I don't stick to it, but, but I know that that's my, my kind of go-to. Um, so I'm curious in terms of the, the individuals that you had in mind when you were writing your book, who is the intended audience for 100 Ways to Successfully Age Gracefully? My intention was probably maybe middle adults, 45 year olds, how they can take a look and say, okay, if I want to live to be 80 or 90, because we're in an area where people are living longer, maybe these would be some nuggets. But also, when I thought about it, actually it's for everybody. Um, a six year old can read the book, and hundred per over 100 can read it. So it's something that can each age f- difference, or I say like your 40s or 50 as your age, it means something different to each decade. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. I definitely, I know that when I was in my, my teenage years, aging had a different meaning than it did in my 20s or even in my 30s. And as I prepare to, uh, as I prepare now in my 40s, I'm, I'm definitely uh, aware that, okay, you know, aging means something different now. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so uh, here's a, this is a good question I want to ask, uh, I want to ask you. Can nutritional changes make an impact in how you age? Yes, definitely. Okay. Well, you are what you eat. We hear that all the time. No, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> but if you think about it, um, it does make sense. Um, eating, you know, I grew up all the time. My grandma would say, always eat some green. I'm like, why is she saying it all the time? But it makes sense now. You want to eat stuff, fruits and vegetables that are man-made. That's natural. Hmm. So um, eating too much sugar will age you faster. Not eating proper nutrients and vitamins, your body doesn't process it, you hold on to it. And so we have an obesity, obesity crisis in America now from what we're eating. We eat fast food. We don't take the time to actually eat real food and cook food. I think what's interesting about how you worded that, uh, you said sh- eating sugar will age you faster. That's interesting to me because you didn't word it by saying eating sugar is unhealthy or eating sugar is bad for you, you said will age you faster. And that, to me, that's a paradigm shift. Mm-hmm. That's a whole new way of, of looking at health. I'm, I'm kind of used to hearing the rhetoric of this is healthy or this is not healthy, but I very rarely think about what will age me faster. Mm-hmm. And if I think about things from that perspective, let me tell you, I might make some different decisions. Yeah, you <laughs> so, might not have chocolate cake every night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so listen, we, we have got to take a short break, but I'm really enjoying this conversation and I know that you are too. So I want you to stay with us because when we come back, we're gonna have much, much more with Tanya Walton. Losing weight's a lot harder than gaining it. But with every step, I lower my risk for type 2 diabetes and heart disease. And that makes every step very much worth the effort. Learn how you can help stop diabetes. Visit checkupamerica.org or call 1-800-DIABETES. And welcome back. You are watching Small Business 21st Century and today's segment of Build Your Difference with my special guest, Tanya Walton, author of 101 Ways to Successfully Age Gracefully. And prior to the break, we were just discussing the paradigm shift of aging gracefully, as opposed to thinking about sort of health as this is healthy and this is unhealthy. Really learning to think about health from the perspective of what choices, learning to think about health from the perspective of will these choices age me faster or not? That is a game changer for me. So Tanya, I, I want to start by asking you, why 101? How did you, I mean, how did you settle on 101? Well, you know, it's almost like a beginner course. You know, in college or taking a course, it's 101 ways, 101 is that beginner. Okay. And so I said, you know what, let me do the 101. 
because there's a thousand yeah, of different ways you could possibly age gracefully. <laughs> but so, I condensed it. So is there, let me just, let's just, spoiler alert, let me just ask you now, is there a possibility that we're going to see a part two to yes. 101? Yes. Okay, okay. In fact, is there a possibility that you will explore other sort of facets of health uh, through a series like this? Definitely. There is? Okay. Oh, I definitely. Just wanted to just wanted to sneak in and see <laughs> if I could see if there was a if there was a hint uh, of things to come there. Why do you encourage your readers to journal? I encourage journaling because it's a way to get your thoughts down on paper. It actually helps you with your writing and communication. And another thing about journaling is uh, you can write down your goals. So you kind of track where you're going. And so, and it's a stress reliever. You know, how can I get these thoughts out of my head? They might be negative. I can't get them anywhere else. Let me write them down. That's, that's something that I think is very eye-opening. We're in a, a society um, and maybe a, a, a culture where not enough people are taking, uh, I would say, advantage of, the, uh, of therapy. Right. Okay. Um, getting out there and, and feeling comfortable speaking with a therapist and, and sort of working through these thoughts. And so it sounds like what you're saying is that by journaling, you can in some ways get some of the benefits of, of therapy right in your own home, right, you know, in your own solo time. Is that fair to say or am I? That is definitely fair to say. Okay. Definitely okay. fair to say. Okay. And uh, so I, I imagine that uh, since, you've, since you launched the book, and also I know that within the book, you, you may have interviewed many, many, many people, mm -hmm. or you may have uh, observed many, many people to, to discover these, these uh, nuggets to successfully age and gracefully. I'm curious about what testimonies you may have heard. Have you, have you, have you um, received any a anecdotes or testimonies from readers about their reaction to the book or maybe how it's helped them? Well, some people have said it was like right on time the book spoke to them and it opened them at a time, I guess for, they were going, maybe going through some stress and it actually helped them think about it and to relieve it. Um, some people are just like, I, it was a great read, you know, they're like, I couldn't put it down. It is like some books you like, oh, let me read a little bit, but they can actually finish the book without and enjoy it and want to yeah. read it more, more than one time they can write, read it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, your, your book <laughs> is, because uh, I, I know when I was sitting down with it, um, just, before, just before we filmed today, actually, mm -hmm. I, was, I was really impressed with just how much enlightenment I felt by the time I was, by the time I finished each page. Mm -hmm. And I want to ask you about the design of the book. We don't have to spend too much time on the design, uh -huh. but, but, but the book does have a very interesting design to it. Mm -hmm. um, it's not just, it's not just words on a page. I mean, you, it seems like you've sort of carefully visually designed each page. I mean, I noticed, I noticed bamboo, art mm -hmm. uh, on the journaling pages. I, I noticed like animals on some of the pages and different sort of symbols. Tell me about that process. What, what, what did you want the reader to feel when they were holding the book and, and reading it during that, during their sort of meditation time? Um, I wanted them to feel like I picked seven different symbols of aging and so they all meant different things. And so when they turned the page, like, oh, let me think. An elephant, mental faculties, mm. um, pineapple, hospitality and friendship. Um, bamboo symbolizes flexibility, um, balance. So all those things play as you're in your life. And so those were some interesting things I wanted to put in there for people to have something to see besides just blank pages also. Yeah, and I can tell you that I absolutely appreciated that yeah. because it was kind of a visual treat for me. And, and I like, and actually, I'm the kind of person that I, my, I try to organize my thoughts. Mm -hmm. I try to organize um, just things I'm experiencing and ingesting in terms of information. And 
the way that you the way that you sort of symbolize or use those symbols on each page to to sort of help me understand okay this particular nugget this is about mental faculties or this particular nugget on this page is going to be about hospitality the way that you sort of organize that really helped me to to sort of grow in that area and know okay on this page, I'm focused on this part now, mm -hmm. okay? And I really appreciate that. I want to know, um, as, a, as a new author and as someone who uh, has written a book that has really made an impact on the lives of so many, so many people, what tips or advice would you give to someone out there who might be watching or listening to today's episode? Okay, so mm -hmm. <laughs> what tips would you give them? Okay, mm, in terms that's an of interesting tip. maybe being an author, but also uh, aging gracefully. Um, okay, tips on being an author: I think everyone has a book in them, mm -hmm. so I think everyone should be able to write their story. So I think everybody has a story. So that is a tip: just do it. You know, it takes time, but just do it. The tips I want people to get from my book. It mainly is being consistent, mm -hmm. um, be selfish, learn how to say no and yes to yourself. And another, t another nugget I would tip I would give is take care of your body. Um, I like a quote by Jim Rohn. He says, take care of your body is the only place you have to live. So there's a very deep mm -hmm. quote. So really, you really got to take care of your body if you want to age gracefully and have like um, mental faculties and being physically able to do what you want to do. Yeah, I really, I appreciate that quote too, actually. I, I saw that quote in the book. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, I like that quote. <laughs> and I thought, my God, that is a good quote. I know. What it is the mean? only place you have to live. How about True. that? Yeah. So I, I'm curious um, about, you know, the, <laughs> what the, I'm curious about the, the, uh, the, where you are going to take this moving forward, okay? So what, I, what I'm trying to articulate here uh -huh. is what lies ahead. I mean, you have, you have you've, you've encapsulated all of this wisdom uh -huh. into a book. People love it, okay? Uh -huh. People are tuning in today, they're watching, uh -huh. they're, they're inspired. What, what, would be the next thing that you want people to to take away okay a aside from uh aside from taking care of your body aside from uh being selfish you know learning to say yes to your to yourself mm -hmm. what would be the next thing that you want people to take away once they've once they've grabbed onto those things what's the next thing that you want them to do Live their life they want to live. Go live their life. That they want to live. Not wow. what someone told you to do, mm -hmm. but to live the life you want to live. Can you, can you elaborate a little bit more on that, especially this idea of being, of, of being sort of respectfully selfish mm -hmm. for yourself? Mm -hmm. I mean, why, what, what made you realize that? Like, <laughs> what made, actually one of my clients, when I was interviewing her, and she was, she just said, "Be selfish." I'm like, "Selfish?" She said, "Yes." She said, "It's okay to be selfish, just and take care of yourself, mm. and just say no, say yes to yourself for self care, take care of yourself." And she's like, another one of the things she said, "Travel. Mm. Just don't wait. Just travel as much as you can. Mm. See the world." And and why is that? What 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 is part of the value? What is the value that? that comes from traveling, tell me. Traveling opens your mind to different people, different mm -hmm. cultures. You won't be in like one little mindset because I came from a small town with two roads. So when I came up to Maryland, six lanes, that's like, ooh, that's a shock for someone for two lane road. Yeah. So it just opens your mind up and broadens things for you. I remember I was, uh, <laughs> I was speaking on a previous episode about, uh, the the delta between when I finished high school and then went to college that time there in the middle mm -hmm. and I I was mentioning to the to our to our viewers that I wish that in that time that I had 
taken more time to travel or to to kind of learn more about the world before sort of locking myself in to a, uh, a, a set sort of education, right. okay? Because I, I didn't really have a, a good sense of perspective at that, at that time to really know what do I want to invest my, my, my educational years into. Right. I mean, it sounds like what you're saying is that that mindset is one that we should constantly sort of return to over the course of our life. Mm -hmm. S stay traveling, stay <laughs> bringing in and learning uh, other cultures. Yeah. Because expanding your awareness, and I love this, helps you to, to age slower yeah. <laughs> and to age gracefully. I absolutely love it. In fact, in fact I want to hear, where did, you even, where did you even develop that term, aging gracefully? I just think it's a great one. <laughs> It just came up, how do you age, you know, everybody want to stay young, mm -hmm. so I was like, well, how do you age gracefully? Mm -hmm. That's how that came about. Yeah, I yeah. love it. Okay, so, you know, I, I, wanna, I wanna close this episode by giving you the last word, okay? Mm -hmm. um, what, is, what is something you would like our readers and our uh, listeners and viewers to do today? Okay, today, related to their health? Breathe. You want them to breathe? Breathe. Okay, I like that. I like that. So, if you're if you're uh, listening and watching and, and 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 with us today, you heard it straight from Miss Tanya Walton. It's time to breathe. And guess what? <laughs> if you want to learn more about Tanya Walton, you can see the information there at the bottom of the screen. And I want to say that you know it's 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 been a wonderful time today as we uh, learn about 101 ways to successfully age gracefully, you've been watching Small Business 21st Century and today's segment of Build Your Difference. I wanna thank you for spending your time with us. And I hope that you learned something. Have a wonderful, have a tremendous week.